Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the Extreme Tech channel. So for today's guys, uh, for today's video, I uh, hope you don't mind uh, going around a uh, fairly familiar topic again, especially for old school guys. Uh, it's uh, effects of uh, 6010 and soaking them in, into the water prior to use. So as we know, uh, 6010 coating of uh, cellulose, it's a mixture of uh, cellulose, sodium silicate and other materials that helps to stabilize the arc. And uh, here we got uh, 7018 1H4, commonly used in a welding application, and it's made up of mixture of iron powder, rutile, and other materials. And uh, H4 is just uh, low hydrogen content to prevent hydrogen induced cracking in the weld. So for example, I'm gonna use a fleet weld uh, electrodes that have been sitting here on a shelf for over a year. And uh, I'm just gonna see and uh, use a uh, handful of rods and soak them into water and see what's gonna happen. So uh, just a heads up, I just wanna uh, say this is, a, I'm not working on any code work or nothing. This is a scrap of a metal that's gonna be used in later in the video. It's a four inch uh, uh, standard uh, SCAD, uh, SCAD 40 pipe. Uh, so the basic question is uh, for how long is good enough to keep that uh, rods uh, in the water and i'm just gonna keep it here for half an hour and see what's gonna happen i'm just gonna put uh, as you can see uh, it's less than a half it's gonna be in the water uh, while the top part that goes inside the stinger is gonna stay dry you don't want to get electrocuted or nothing uh, if you got a wet uh, stick and this is the results after half an hour and you can see all that uh, discoloration uh, it's a kind of yellow uh, and that's probably flux uh, softening the flux the flux is usually a combination of minerals such as iron powder titanium dioxide and uh, calcium carbonate on 6010 as i said this is that uh, four four inch uh, four inch sked uh, sked 80 uh, so the one side i'm just going to use regular dry 6010 uh, 18 uh, stick is gonna push root from the bottom up to three, three o'clock, and uh, key, try to keyhole it later up on the, on the twelve. Just to wanna see comparing both sides. The other side I'm gonna use with the pre-soaked uh, 6010 uh, electrode to see what's the difference. I'm gonna use the same amperage. Uh, everything's gonna be the same. The same technique. Uh, I'll try to keyhole it and to see what's gonna happen. As I said, this is a 6010 uh, fleet weld. Uh, one eight uh, dry and that's gonna be combination as I said uh, all those rods I left in for more than half an hour they were no good as that all that flux was just uh, falling off so definitely you can weld with that and the idea is uh, keep it pre-soaked and uh, so what I'm gonna do uh, before I start welding on the other side is gonna keep one while I'm burning with one for the duration, while one is burning, I'm gonna keep the other one in the water. As you can see here, 76 amp, that's gonna be uh, amperage for my root pass. Some guys like to use it, uh, 80, 80 amps, 85, it doesn't matter. This is, only, this is only experiment, guys. As I said before, it's not any code work or nothing. I don't recommend uh, doing that. Uh, you can do it just for fun on your farm code if you want. If you got any piece of scrap metal pipe, you can go and play ahead, see the difference, uh, see how it behaves. You can see uh, what's gonna what's gonna happen. Uh, is it gonna affect your route? Uh, how it's gonna behave? Uh, lo lots of stuff to learn. Uh, we all heard stories, especially from the old school welders, especially if you got a fingernails inside, uh, also known as a, as an arc blow caused by poor ground or uh, just uh, magnetized one side usually the hotter piece that's where usually uh, then you got even on a stick on a stick you can see the top it's like a fingernail as well also on the, on the root looks like a fingernails uh, that's why some old school guys they will like uh, pre-soak it a little bit uh, wipe it with a rag with a clean rag and just uh, they say that's how they get rid of uh, any fingernails uh, as you can see here, I'm just uh, keyholing it. The bottom part I was just uh, pushing inside, and now I'm just keyholing on the this side. And it's gonna, I'm gonna go up uh, to one or two o'clock. 
it's kind of getting hotter here I'm just uh, opening those sides uh, really fast just gonna stop let it cool down a little bit and uh, then uh, just continue on finish okay this is that part of the route I did as I said 76 amps it's a little bit shy on the top uh, it's uh, as I said it's uh, just experiment just to see how the the puddle behaves how the rod reacts and is there any difference okay as you can see here uh, the bottle is cut at the height we just exposed the top part uh, of the rod which goes uh, in the clamp I put a new rod in as I take one rod out leaving one rod in the water for the duration of the run of uh, one rod uh, that's the whole idea so basically it's just probably what more than 30 seconds 40 seconds it's going to be duration to hold that uh, rod in the water even less it all depends okay now we're going to strike an arc you can see the rod is wet and we're going to strike an arc and see what's actually going to happen uh there are the other reason is that that's to show you how much uh, root face you can keyhole through with a cellulosic rod uh, i really like a key holding uh the root but i'm just gonna as you can see here i'm key holding for the full thickness of the well penetration i uh, just like to see that uh, spectacular effect of hydrogen of the arc uh, characteristics i'm a key holding i can tell you right away uh, there is some uh, arc stability uh, there's a little bit better pen uh, penetration inside and it's kind of gives you more 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 amperage uh, i'm still holding the 76 as i did on the for the other side where i was uh, using a dry 6010 uh cellulose used in a coating of 6010 uh, is derived from a wood pulp uh, it's a natural polymer that makes up the cell walls of plants including trees uh, as a set of 10 from wood pulp that has been processed and purified to remove uh, impurities so while technically it's possible to dip 60 10 in water uh, prior to welding it's uh, generally not recommended uh, the coating of electron can absorb moisture from the water which can cause uh, the electrode to become unstable during welding uh, however some welders may choose to dip their 60 10 uh, prior to welding uh, if you do choose to dip your 60 10 um, should be dipped in the water for only a few seconds as prolonged exposure can cause the coating to break down as I show you on that uh, on that uh, yellow water that was over there uh, it is worth noting that dipping 6010 in water prior to welding is not a common practice and most welders prefer to follow the manufacturer instructions for storage and handling so as I said guys this was only a, just an experiment to see how it's gonna react, uh, how it's gonna look like, uh, what we're gonna accomplish. So definitely uh, comparing these two sides on your, on your left side, uh, that's the pre-soaked 6010 and on your right side, that was the dry one we did on beginning. Uh, as you can see, feel definitely arc becomes even more penetrative uh, when we did that and uh, arc blow is uh, lessened. Uh, it's kind of gives you better control and that's it guys i uh, hope you like enjoyed this video and uh hope you learned something new and go ahead and try something thanks for watching and see you in the next one